Section 1-4, Day 2, graphs of sine and cosine, and that's with everything going on. So if you watch the pre-lesson, A is amplitude, B affects the period, C, if this is plus, moves it left, if it's minus, moves it right, and D, just flat out, if it's plus, it's up, if it's negative, it's down. But then when that darn B and C starts working together, we got a little different situation with this formula to help us how far uh, to determine how far it shifts to the right or shifts to the left. Remember I said in the pre-lesson, I'm not going to worry about this plus or the minus because we know that if that plus, you know, if it's a plus, that's going to be left. If it's a minus, it's going to be right. So we are going to concentrate on these formulas but we're not going to get too headstrong with the, what does the plus mean? What does the minus mean? We already know what it means. Um, but we're going to kind of try to simplify it. So, cosine. Haven't done a lot of these. So, good. It's good that it starts with this. What does that uh, foundational graph look like? Well, remember, sine we know goes through the origin. Cosine goes around or up and over the origin. That's how you get your first piece of it. And then it's going to go down here, and it's going to go down here. Again, go to Desmos and check it out. If you don't believe the basic, you know, premise of this, just check it out to give yourself that confidence. But that is the foundational graph of cosine. Now we're going to build on it. Did not have a sample like this in the pre-lesson, but there's our minus. Remember I said in the pre-lesson, if that A is negative, that's going to be over the x-axis. Technical term is... It reflects over the x-axis. So this says graph and state. In other words, we're not going to just graph it. We're going to talk the talk. So we've got to say it reflects over the x. That's clue number one. So we're going to take this guy and we're going to reflect it over the x. So that's going to go up here. This is going to come down here. Everything just kind of flips. And then I'm just going to go to the dotted. And there we have it. Okay, so I'm up to the dotted. <clears throat> Made one move. What does this do? Well, it doubles the amplitude. So I'm to the dotted line. So that's going to go here. That low point's going to go from negative 1. It's going to double down to negative 2. That high point at 1 is going to go up to 2. That high point at 1 is going to go up to 2. Now I'm going to duplicate this dotted drawing. Remember, 0. If you double 0, it's just 0. So there's another target. So I'm going to go like this. Down to negative 2, back through 0, and then to here. Okay? So it's the big tulip that we're, is, uh, that was our last step. What does this minus mean? That minus, oh, by the way, how do we talk the talk? We had a vertical stretch factor of 2. We doubled it. Okay? What does this do? Well, it moves it right, pi over 2. Now notice, B is 1. You know what that means? Two things. It means our period, our period is going to be normal, which is just 2 pi. Because remember the formula is 2 pi over the absolute value of B, which would just be the absolute value of 1, which means no change. So our period is still going to be stuck at 2 pi. We just need to move this thing right pi over 2, which means one chunk. So this guy needs to move over 1 chunk. So I'm going to move them over here. See the outer edge should be above pi. It's going to come to here. This guy is going to move into here. This point is here. So I'm going to go back to the solid line just to kind of keep going like that. Oh, and that zero is going to move over uh, pi over two as well. And so there's where we're at so far. And then we just need to bump the whole thing up one. So this comes up one. I'm imagining that it's up one. This is up here. So I know it's going to be here. What a mess, huh? And then this goes up one. And then this goes up one. So we just have to bump the whole thing up one. And so there we have it. Not good. I mean, it's not pretty. So I come there and there. Okay. So again, if you're on a test or a quiz, you can tell me what your final graph is. And for the vertical translation, we can just say up one. Phase shift, that's just, we said it, 
its right pi over 2. So that's what we're talking about when we talk about phase shift. So we got the period, we got the amplitude, phase shift, and vertical translation, and we graphed the little rascal. Okay, let's go on to the next sample. There's only two more, um, but this is pushing you a little harder. So our foundational graph needs to be uh, sine. Remember, this is pi over 2, this is pi, this is negative pi over 2, this is negative pi, and I'm just going to stop there because we're only going to focus on one period. We're getting better at this because it's sine. It's going to go up and down on this side, and on this side it's going to go down and up. There's your sine curve, one period of it. All right, one step at a time, and yes, this is going to be messy. But the good news is you can rewind it. Uh, that means we're going to reflect. Notice the instructions. State the amplitude and period of the sinusoid. That's a fancy name for the graph of a sine function or cosine. And the phase shift, vertical translation, and then graph one period. That's exactly what we did in the previous problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to reflect over the x. And so we're just going to flip it. So here we go. Just going to flip it like that, and there we go. So we flipped it. So dotted is what we're up to. But wait a minute, the amplitude is now 3. So if the amplitude is 3, the absolute value of 3 is just 3. Well, actually, it's negative 3. I forgot about that negative. But it's still 3. So i got to go to the dotted one and pump it up to 3. And then this, neg this negative 1 goes down to negative 3. And there we have it. So it's the big one and dotted. But we're still making some changes. What's this plus pi over 2 mean? It means it's going to be a phase shift left pi over 2. So we've got to move this big guy to the left pi over 2. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of do the parallel thing where I know I'm just moving it left pi over 2. You'll get better at this. Now, what does this minus 1 do? This final guy right here that we got to, we just need to drop him down 1. So as we get better at this, we can kind of just say, you know what? It just needs to be lower by 1. And that is my final drawing. Okay? So uh, vertical translation is just down 1. Phase shift left pi over 2, uh, amplitude, you know, uh, we could say that was a vertical stretch, factor of 3. And notice, our B is a 1. That means our period didn't change, okay? So our period is just our foundational 2 pi. So we've completed that one. Last problem. So we're back to cosine. And here's my pi over 2, here's my pi, negative pi over 2, negative pi. And as you can see, this is already done for you, so there must be something going on. We're going to end up way up here. Uh, a little clue for you. But we got to start with the foundational drawing of cosine, and it's just like that. Okay? All right. So now we got to make the changes. See, there's no negative there, so there's no reflection over the x-axis. That's good. The amplitude is 3. That means there's a vertical stretch factor of 3. That's the fancy talk. So this is up 1. we got to triple that. This is down negative 1. we got to triple that. This is down negative 1. Triple that. So now I'm just going to... Oh, and zeros. We know that those are our targets because if you triple 0, you just get 0. So those are handy to know as you're just trying to draw it. All right, now we've got a real problem. Um, this guy right here, if b equals 2, we've got a change in our period. The formula is 2 pi all over the absolute value of that number, which is just 2. So it's pi. Once again, the walls are closing in. So I know this is already squeezed in, but this is going to move to here. This is going to move to here. And really, that point doesn't move. So now, this, again, this is, oh, and that point is going to have to move here, and that point's going to have to move here, if we're going to squeeze it in. So that guy is getting really skinny, okay? Now, if this was, if this was a 1, it'd be easy. We'd say, go to the right 
pi over 4. But because there's a 2 here, we have to use the formula C over B. So C is pi over 4. B is 2. And i got to give you guys a little lesson here. If I have 10 over 2 over 2, oh, uh, wait a minute. Let's make that 16. This will be an easier example. 16 over 2 over 2. Think about it. Isn't that just 8 over 2, which is 4? Now, what if I thought, hey, I just want this guy to jump underneath and multiply. Wouldn't that give me 16 over 4, which also gives me 4? Why am I showing this to you? A lot of students get messed up right here, and they're like, well, what do I do with this? The second thing I showed you is the trick. This guy jumps down here, and you're, it's going to turn into pi over 8. That's going to mess with us a little bit, so just hang in there. Again, minus means right, so we need to move this whole thing right, pi over 8. Now, I'm going to save this for the last step because I see this guy is going to help us get out of this mess. So this is up 4. So you see this real skinny one right here? we got to move that up 4. See how this point is down 3? If I go up 4 from there, it's just going to go up to here. This is down 3. If I go up 4 from there, it's going to go here. This guy is already up 2, so I need to go up 1, 2, 3, 4 more. And I need to draw that really skinny portion. I should have a little thing going like this. Um, and there it is. That's that little skinny guy simply moved up 4. Now i got to move it pi over 8. Now, a lot of perfectionists are going to be like, well, what's pi over 8? Well, pi over 4, remember, is 45 degrees. So pi over 8 must be half of that, or 22.5. You know what that means in the world of graphing? That just means a little bit, okay? So we're going to move this whole graph right a tiny bit. Now, think about it. Pi over 2 is 90 degrees. Pi over 4 is 45, or half. Pi over 8 must be a quarter of 90 degrees. So we just have to take one of these little chunks and move it to the right just a smidge. So I mean a smidge. So this is going to have to go like this. Just a smidge, and then a smidge. That, believe it or not, is my final answer. And that's how this stuff goes. And you can type this whole thing in your, you know, graphing calculator or Desmos, and you're going to end up with something that looks crazy like this, or, and it just, keeps, it just keeps going like this. But we're only picking out a chunk of it. All right, big mess. But we're going to have a chance to, you know, have a lot of questions in class. So I'm looking forward to that.